Okay, sit yourself onto your left and come into good cross-legged position with your hands in the masti. Let's have a little wiggle about, just make sure that you feel like you're sitting evenly. Just hold onto your knees, elevating the heart area upward, drawing the shoulders down away from your ears. And then bring your hands into the Namaste. Focus on filling the lungs from the bottom to the top and emptying the lungs from the top to the bottom. Focusing on long, slow, deep, deliberate inhalations and exhalations. Soften your jaw and your tongue and your throat. And then with an exhalation, draw your chin down to meet your chest. Just spend a moment to seek to generate a genuine heartfelt sense of gratitude for something or someone or somewhere. Hold on to that feeling of abundance in the heart area. And then release the backs of your hands down towards your knees, palms facing upwards, tip of your index finger in contact with the tip of the thumb. Stretching the other fingers away from the palms of the hands, just a gesture of wisdom and peacefulness that we can carry into our practice. And then as you raise your head, allow your eyes to softly open and the focus to softly come back. Just hold on to your knees, just listen to the breath, listen to the breath as it enters and as it exits and then turn with an exhalation to the right side just drawing your abdomen across and your ribs and your shoulders Using the out breath to intensify the turn, just acknowledging your resistance. Come back to the centre, hold onto your knees, lift up into the chest, and with an exhalation, turn to the left. Again, drawing the abdomen from the right to the left. Ribs across, the shoulders across. Using each subsequent exhalation just to turn a little more deeply. 
and then come back to the centre. Just come off your lift and come into Adamuka Virasana, just being conscious of the shins in contact with the floor, lengthening the chin and the chest forwards, lengthening the arms away, bringing the forehead down, aiming to keep the seat bones down on the heels, using something between the seat bones and the heels if they're miles away, otherwise just draw them down to the heels. You can always edge, them a edge your hands a little closer to your knees if you want, just to keep the seat bones drawing down towards the heels. Just breathing in through the nose and out through the nose, lengthening into the arms. onto your knees, turn your toes under and then come up into dog down. Hands as wide apart as the mat, feet as wide apart as the mat. Turning the legs inwards, lifting the seat bones, lifting the chest. And pressing the palms into the floor, lifting up into the seat bones. Lifting the tailbone towards the ceiling. Step your feet forward, just come up into a standing position. Use blocks underneath your hands for half international if your back is stiff or if you've got a bad back. Otherwise, bring your feet as wide apart as the mat, turning your toes inwards, raise your arms, hook the thumbs into the crease of the elbows. And then hinge at the hips. Just come forwards and hang down. Again, just acknowledging your body's response to the pose. If it's too strong for your back, then get blocks from underneath your hands and come into half Uttanasana. Just feel how your body reacts to the pose, where you feel stiff, where you feel resistance, where you feel freedom. So this pose only works if you really firmly activate the legs. If you activate the legs like you want to lift them away from the floor. Breathing even, deep inhalations and exhalations. And then release your hands down to the floor. And then bring your hands into your hips and come up into a standing position. And then just come up into Tadasana. Lifting up into the chest, elevating the heart area upwards, stre stretching the shoulders down away from your ears, just feeling the balance in the feet. Just listening to the sound of the breath. Feeling 
and the lungs evenly. Observing the sinuses, the clarity of the breath. Bring your arms out nice and wide in towards your chest and then step or jump your feet apart, stretching your arms out. Turn your left toes in, your right leg and foot all the way out. Bring the chest to face the front. And then come down into Trikonasana, looking up if you can, or look forwards or down. Lifting up into the chest, turning the abdomen to face the ceiling. Stretching up towards the top hand, breathing in and out through the nose. Feeling your alignment, observing where the feet are in relation to the hips, where the spine is in relation to the hips, where the arms are in relation to each other. Reach up, come back to the centre, keep your arms outstretched if you can, swap your feet around, turn your right toes in, your left leg and the foot all the way out, and then come down into Trikonasana on the left side, again turning the abdomen and the chest to face the ceiling, just feeling your weight into your alignment. Is that back, is that front leg hip, the left hip, is it sticking out? Or can you keep that front leg buttock bone squeezing forwards? Can you keep that back leg hitting towards the back of the room? Just listen to the breath. Coming back to the centre, bring the feet parallel and then step or jump the feet back together just coming back up into Tadasana. Just breathing even deep inhalations and exhalations. Just getting your breath back. Get a block and have it on the, on the back of your mat, somewhere where you're not going to jump on it, but somewhere you can reach. Um, if, well, we're going to go into Paj Vakanasana. So you should be able to reach it, but don't have it somewhere where you're going to jump on it. Just lift up into the chest. Bring your arms out nice and wide, and then step or jump your feet wide apart. So a little wider than for trikonasana if you can. Turn your left toes in, your right leg and foot all the way out. Again, just being mindful of the alignment of this front foot in relation to the back foot. Keep this back leg really straight, lift up into the chest and bring the chest to face the front, bring the abdomen to face the front. Bend the front knee. So we're gonna go through Vira Bhadrasana too. Bend in that knee, keeping the back leg really straight and then reach down. Find the floor, or if you can't reach, use the block. Just keep your top hand on the hip for a moment. Turn in that chest all the way out. And then reach up and over, look underneath the armpit. So it should be a good straight line from the back foot. Push the bent knee into the arm, the arm into the bent knee. Turning the chest up to face the ceiling. And lengthening from that straight arm into that straight leg. And then come back to the centre. Swap the feet around, turn the right toes in, the left leg and foot all the way out. But again, being mindful of that 
foot placement. This time you're going to keep the right leg straight and bend that left leg, find a right angle. And then reach down, just keep the top hand on the hip for a moment. Find that, find the floor or the block, turn the abdomen up to the ceiling and then reach up and over and look underneath the armpit. Just feel the body in three dimensions. What's happening with that back hip? If it's sticking out, then get a block. Go a bit higher and see if you can squeeze that front leg buttock bone forwards a little. Keep the back leg hitting towards the back of the room. And then come back to the centre, bring the feet parallel. And then step or jump the feet back together. And then come back into Tadasana. Just lifting up into the chest. And using your breath to settle the heartbeat. Because the heartbeat tends to increase in Parjvakanasana. Just bring your feet hip width apart, turn your toes inwards and then raise your arms up, hook the thumbs into the crease of the elbows, wrap your fingers around your elbows and then just hang down. See Ruth, Ruth, um, let me know how that felt, so just send me a WhatsApp or whatever. Thanks. Let's hang down, stretch the legs up to the ceiling, turn the fronts of the thighs inwards. Just hanging down into Uttanasana. So we're working quite quickly today. We usually work quite slowly. So today, we're working through the poses quite quickly. So. How does that feel for you? Does that wrong foot you a little? Does it feel like you don't have time to just establish yourself in the pose? Or does it feel good to be moving through the poses at a little faster rate? Just breathe in through the nose and out through the nose. Let the top of the body hang down. Keep the legs firmly engaged. your hands down to the floor and then come into half Uttanasana so if you need to put blocks under your hands then do but half Uttanasana needs to have straight legs and an extending spine the spine extending away from the body extending the chin and the chest forwards lifting the seat bones hitting the knees into the sockets, turning the fronts of the thighs inwards, lifting the seat bones, projecting the chin and the chest forwards. And then walk your hands forwards towards the end of your mat. Have your hands shoulder width apart, have your feet hip width apart, and come into dog down. Spread in the fingers and the palms.
then come down onto your knees and then sit back on your heels. Sit back on your heels, lift in the chest, drawing the shoulders down away from your ears. Just allowing the shins to release into the floor. Keep the chest lifted, observe your energy. Observe how your energy is feeling. And perhaps you released lightness into blood. So use your in breath and your out breath to distribute that evenly. your seat poses and then sit directly on the floor have a belt have some blocks where you can reach them and then we'll just stretch your legs out for dandasana if you feel that you sink in the chest when you sit on the, sit directly on the floor if you stretch the legs away and you feel like you kind of sink like this, you roll onto the back edge of the seat bones and you can't roll onto the front edge of the seat bones. Sit on a folded blanket. So have the inner edge of the feet together, lift up into the chest. Stretch the hands to the sides. In fact, let's all sit on a folded blanket just so you can feel how it feels on the floor. But then just get a folded blanket and sit yourself onto there. So it's only a very small lift really, but it can make a big difference. But it's useful sometimes to just observe those differences, what those actions do. So have the big toes together, turn the fronts of the thighs inwards, tighten the kneecaps, lift up into the chest. And then raise your arms upwards, raise your arms to the ceiling, spread the fingers, spread the palms. Keep the legs activated. It's easy, isn't it, when you raise your arms to forget about your legs. So go back to the legs, make sure that they're still activated. Breathing in through the nose and out through the nose, lengthening the shoulders away from your ears, lengthening the heart area up to the ceiling. your arms just get the belt and throw the belt around your feet so push your feet into the belt push so feel that how activating the feet pushing them into the into the belt suddenly gives you new access into the legs new access into the thighs especially so press the fronts of the thighs through to the backs of the thighs turn the fronts of the thighs inwards even if the heels start to separate hold on to the belt there's never a death grip it's just really just holding on with the kind of index finger and the thumb so trying not to kind of just be try not to be aggressive with it you know, like kind of trying to throttle it you're just trying to hold on just hold on to the belt activate the legs and then elevate the heart area upwards fill the lungs with the energy of breath and then just a little bit at a time if you've got a bad back you can just stay at that first stage just working just to elevate the spine Otherwise, just inching the hands forwards just a little bit at a time. 
But when we come forwards, we always come forwards with the heart area lifted, with the head lifted. It's really tempting to come down with the head first. But if you do that, then you round your back, you push your shoulder blades out, and then you're going to hurt your back. So keep the heart area lifted. Coming forwards a little bit at a time, maybe you can find your feet. Reactivate the legs. Press the fronts of the thighs into the backs of the thighs. Lifting up into the chest. Elevate the heart area forwards. Keeping the head lifted. Just a little bit at a time. Come forwards. If you can reach around your feet, then do. But never sacrifice in the lift of the heart area. Keeping that area open and clear as you come forward into Paschimottanasana. Lengthening the heart area to the feet as you come down. Activating the legs, pressing the thighs into the floor. The more you activate the legs, think about Uttanasana, the more you activate the legs, the more you can Come forward in the spine. Just come into the pose slowly. Just working within your own ability. And then gently come back into a seated position, just observing how the brain is quiet after coming out of a forward bend. Just stay on the lift and then come into, into Badakanasana. So bring the feet close to the body. Hold on to the big toes and then roll onto the front edge of the seat bones, lifting up into the chest, elevating the heart area up towards the ceiling. Breathing even, deep inhalations and exhalations. If you've got a couple of blocks handy, just place those in front of you. you might need those in a moment so we're going to come forwards in Badakanasana if you've got a bad back again just stay at this first stage and just enjoy the opening action of the chest elevating the heart area upwards otherwise drive the heart area forwards keeping the head lifted Lifting the chest, bending your elbows, keeping the head lifted, the heart area lifted. Bend your elbow, elbows into the inner groins, lengthening those inner groins to the inner knees. If you can, you can let go of your toes and then either have blocks for your hands that just helps you to really stay lifted or you can stretch along the floor keeping the heart area lifted keeping the head lifted just breathing pushing the heels together keeping the inner heel so the center of the heels together Keep the tailbone down, keep the heart area lifted. And then walk your hands back to the centre. And then get hold of the big toes again, lift the heart area up to the ceiling. Just breathing even. Deep inhalations and exhalations, lifting the heart area. Lifting the heart area, drawing the shoulders down. And 
then just coming to cross legs, just directly into swastikasana, holding on to your knee. Lifting up into the heart area, drawing the shoulders down away from your ears. Just listen to the breath. In the heart towards the ceiling, just gently turn around to the left side, so to, to the right side, sorry. Draw in your abdomen across your ribs and the shoulders. back to the center hold on to the knees lift up into the chest and then turn to the left Come back to the center. Just come down onto your onto your back and down into Sopta Bandhakanasana. As you come down onto your back, pull the feet in towards your seat bones, and then just rest your hands on your lower ribs. If there's stiffness in your hips, you can put blocks underneath the outer thighs. Otherwise, just let gravity do its thing. Pushing your heels together, turning the tailbone in, drawing the abdomen towards the spine. And then stretch your arms up to the ceiling. Lengthen your arms up to the ceiling. Try and keep the outer shoulder blade in the armpit chest down on the floor as you stretch your arms up interlock your fingers right into the webbing of the hands turn the palms all the way out and then lengthen your arms along the floor Soften your jaw and your tongue and your throat. Your hands swap the interlock of the fingers. 
So you do the unnatural interlock and then turn the palms all the way out and lengthen your arms along the floor. Just breathing in through the nose and out through the nose, listening to the breath. Focusing on long, slow, deep, deliberate inhalations and exhalations. Drawing your lumbar towards the spine by bringing the navel in towards the spine. If it makes sense, draw in your lumbar towards the floor by drawing your lum your navel towards the spine. And then release your arms. Just rest your hands on your lower ribs. Rest in your back into the floor, listening to the breath. And then draw your knees together. Have your knees together and your feet apart. Have a block handy. We're going to go, going to go up into Setu Banda. So just rest in your knees together, your feet apart for a moment, just resting out the hips. And then get hold of the lower shins, bring the feet as close to the seat bones as you can. Get a block and then lift your tailbone up off the floor. And then acknowledge perhaps that you get stuck. So then you've got to gather your shoulder blades together, come right up onto the tops of the shoulders. And then place the brick in the tailbone sacrum region of your back. Hold on to the edges of the mat like you want to tear it apart. Turn the crease of the elbows to face the ceiling and then out to the sides of the room. And then just stretch one leg along the floor. Just see how that feels in your back. Does that feel okay? Bring the leg back. Stretch out the other leg. Again, just observing how that feels in your back. If your back felt okay in those two stretches, then stretch both legs along. Slide in the heels along the mat, keeping the heels in contact with the floor. Keep turning those inner elbows outwards. Just lifting up into the chest, feeling that you can open in that inner groin area where the legs meet the hips. Listen to the breath. So long, slow, deep, deliberate inhalations and exhalations. Keeping the arms active, keeping the legs active. Maintain Tadasana, turning the thighs inwards. If you straighten in your legs. Keeping the heart area lifted, keeping the chest lifted, keeping the shoulders down on the floor.
please bring your feet back to the seat boners. Just stay on the lift for a moment longer. And then lift the, the seat bones up off the blocks, even if you have to come onto your tiptoes to do it, move the block out of the way, adjust your shoulders as you guide yourself back down onto the floor. Just stay on the floor with your knees apart, your feet together. And then draw your knees in towards your chest, just have a little rock side to side, from top to bottom, just a gentle massage on the spine. Maybe you get hold of the little toe side of the foot, bring the feet apart and then just have a rock from side to side in happy baby. Bring the feet down towards each other to move into the lumbar and move the feet apart and up towards the head to just massage the rest of the back. And then pull your knees in towards your chest and then rock over onto the right side and then stretch out the top leg. Just sit in Cross legs for a moment, just observe the energy that you've released through your practice so far. We're going to finish in a restorative pose, restorative surfboard. So have a block for your head and then a bolster for your body. And then if you've got like a rolled up blanket or a mini bolster, have that for underneath your shins. So this is a really nice pose just for releasing the neck and the shoulders. So you can come down, so the little bolster is underneath your shins, and you're gonna come down, and the position in terms of the lower block, it depends on how long your body is. Your chin needs to be free of the end of the block. So for me, that's kind of the whole of the pelvis is on the block, but it depends on your body length. So the, the important thing is that your chin is free of the end of the block, and then you're just gonna rest your head down on the block. You can always put a blanket over the top of the block if you want, just for a little bit of extra cushioning, and then just rest your arms. Bend your arms, palms facing the floor, and just rest your arms into the floor. And then just rest your forehead into the blanket. Just listen to the sound of your breath as it enters and as it exits. to just release so this is a really nice way to just relax your neck and shoulders So rather than consciously extending in the restorative pose, we consciously relax. We soften the muscles. We let go of the muscles. We allow the body to become heavy. the more heavy the physical body becomes, the lighter the body becomes on the inside. If we give in to heaviness, 
and we find that lightness of being rooted deep in the bones and that energetic lightness radiates from the bones and into the muscles into the muscles and the organs and the flesh and the skin So just allowing the body to completely release into the floor. And then when you're ready, just bring your hands underneath your shoulders and then push yourself up into a seated position, just sitting back on your heels for a moment. Just observing the energy you released through your practice. That lightness of the blood and the bones and then just sit on your bolster come into a cross-legged position and then come into Namaste just breathe in through the nose and out through the nose just Observing your balance, observing your breath, drawing the breath down into the abdomen. Acknowledging the positive energy you have created through your practice this morning, that good, positive, healthy flow of clean energy that the extensions and the forward bends and the twists 
brings the body out of the mind. And then draw your chin down to meet your chest. Just acknowledge the positive energy you have created inside, particularly around the heart area. And then send some of that positive energy out into the world. the backs of your hands down towards your knees, your palms facing upwards, connecting the tip of the index finger with the tip of the thumb, just a gesture of wisdom and peacefulness that we can carry with us into our day. And then as you raise your head, allow your eyes to softly open focus to softly come back. Thank you very much. Thank you. So hopefully you feel like you've really lifted your energy. We worked a little faster today in some of those standing poses. So maybe that makes you feel a particular way. Good, um, energised feeling. So thank you very much for joining me.